good sis. Do you believe in love after love after love after love after love? I can feel something inside me say, I really don't think you're strong enough. Oh. Do you believe in love after love after love after love after love? I can feel something. That's all I know. Uh, of it too. Yeah. Man, I used to know every single word of that song, man. Uh, when I used to go, so my little brother's mom um, and my at my old when I go to see my dad's on the weekends. Um, I remember that was the first house I even got my first Dreamcast at. Uh, oh, but, shout dude, out to Dreamcast, yeah. Yeah, baby! Best, I still have. I, I will always I, for the, my I whole didn't. life. I will always have a Dreamcast. That's I, my I favorite, had one too. favorite, favorite, favorite system. We're man. pulling up a picture of a Dreamcast right now, baby. <laughs> yeah, We're dude, going what, back. What's super cool about Dreamcast? Dreamcast too is um it was it, maybe it was probably why they didn't really uh you know Go. end up lasting very long but they were the first thing like actually printed on like CD ROMs like CDs right. uh -huh. and you can uh, still to this day you can take every one of those games and download like a torrent for it and print it to like a you know like a burn CD and you can burn all the games on a CD. So oh sweet. So okay, like you heard it first like this high. You I'm heard it pretty. first on the How Goods is podcast. Games. <laughs> Teddy swims is a pirate in Dreamcast <laughs> games. Pirate. I feel like that no Teddy, I feel like now though they don't care. Yeah, yeah I think they're fine. If yeah. you're yeah. if you're pirating N64 <laughs> games, they're like you no, go dude, for Dreamcast. it. Have it, baby. Don't have get it twisted. It. Don't get it twisted, man. I like that Dreamcast, man. That thing was fun. I, I, it's so ahead of its time, man. Yeah, I didn't have anything post Nintendo 64 and then when that came out I like got one for Christmas for some reason I didn't even ask for it but I was so stoked and I remember playing NFL 2K and it was that I always played with the Vikings because if you threw a Hail Mary pass to Randy Moss you catch him every time it was a touchdown so I would play that game against like the computer and it would be like 185 to zero because <laughs> I would just throw long bombs to Randy yeah, Moss and catch still, it every time. I still got uh, NFL <laughs> Blitz 2000 uh, so on there, they, man. Uh, yeah, that was a good, that was Power a good stuff, Stone, man. Power Stone, man. Sonic Adventure. Woo! All that shit, man. Dude, my man is the all last about cool, the dream. The last cat. cool Sonic game. How, man, let's uh, be real. How often do you actually play your Dreamcast? Uh, it's been a minute now, <laughs> man. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, I'd have to, I had to break it out of the... Out of the, like, since I moved last, I've kind of had to break it out of the bag and see if it still works. But God, the Dreamcast, man, bringing it back. Oh, Crazy Taxi! Didn't you used to play that at my dad's yeah, house? Yeah, that's why I have Crazy, crazy taxi, taxi as well. Crazy. I, I would play. Taxi. I would play Crazy Taxi at Polanski's Pizza in my uh, in Chewy. We had one pizza restaurant, and they had Crazy Taxi in there, and I think Double Dragon or something. Ooh. And oh man, I would waste my entire month's allowance <laughs> on the old Crazy Taxi Double Dragon. I'd be playing both games at the same time, bro. I'm kicking ass and I'm whipping it in the donuts in the old parking lot. Uh, yeah, dude. With some soft serve, dude. Soft serve just chained to my neck. I'm throwing my neck up every so often. Crazy taxi. Soft serve. <laughs> Crazy taxi was wild. Um, we are thrilled to have the legend of a human being oh, in the I studio with us today. <laughs> Teddy swims all the way from Georgia. Woo! He's fresh off of a COVID test. We got negatives all around, baby. All We're ready around. to hang out. And with our wangs out. You know it. <laughs> you guys want to do this whole interview with our weens hanging out of our pants? I don't well, want to do that. I got to reach down and get my work <laughs> up a little bit because I don't want to. <laughs> it's a little colder in Washington. You know what I'm saying? I got to get mine a little worked up I a little bit. I feel you, bit, man. I feel I wanna... you. Yeah, Even mine... if I got mine worked up, I'd still need to do some work, man. I... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Julian's, Julian worked up. I don't think he would go fit out the end out, of his he zip. He wouldn't get out the zip, dude. Yeah. Julian pees on his balls quite often. It hurts like hell going in, but you can't feel shit once it gets in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Short and thick, just like me. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> um, Ted, thank you so much for being here, man, and for making the trek and uh, for being just a legend of a human being. For everybody at home, I kind of want to give them the backstory because I feel like there's a really fun uh, story about our first interaction and how we met. Um, we, I was playing a gig in Atlanta that, yeah. uh, that Julian had just randomly flown in for like that was the one date on the tour he was going to fly in and hang out and we finished the show and we're walking out to the bus huh? it's like midnight 1 a.m something like this and uh we were talking about this in the rig that like sometimes after a show you go to the bus and on your way to the bus is like a bunch of people waiting outside and you 
it's it, how, what a thrill, right? You, people want to talk to you and you want to hang out and take pictures and it's a blast. But uh, there's only a few people that you can like connect with outside and go, hey, we should like go hang out and like hang, like proper hang, you know? And uh, we go to the bus and, and you're one of the, you and your friend was Clark is his yeah, name. Clark, is that right? Man. Uh, you're hanging out. And we get to talk, and I'm like, dude, this guy's this guy's cool. These cats are cool. We we should go and have a drink. So we we go to a bar. It was like a late it's night. The pasta. Highlander. The Highlander. Yeah, my buddy, uh, my buddy Brandon Amtower, who owns a point in my town, Conyers. He he used to. I don't know if he still owns a piece of that bar, but that was his place at the time. So. Oh man, we, you I, took us there. Is yeah, that right? I, I, I even at the time I had I didn't know Brandon that well either. It wasn't until like you know maybe a year or so later that I realized that yeah. was even his place. So yeah, mm. it's it's crazy how uh, oh. it works out. Yeah, we went to the high tower. We got like three gallons of smothered mac and cheese and like four and bottles of man, Pinot uh, Noir. And the, uh, the loaded tachos, the right? Ta They're like uh, nacho ta uh, tots or whatever, uh, right? Yeah. Oh, damn. damn, bro. Oh, those are fire. I think I'm still feeling <laughs> and, and those. And smoked like through a whole pack of uh, yellow God. American spirits, man. Yeah, I had an off day. That I, had I wish I remember anything this, about bro. this meal. <laughs> <laughs> I um I wish the computer was working because the other day when we were talking about you coming to town that night was there was a lot of great things that happened we met that night I left my first uh, Yelp review <laughs> and <laughs> the only one and we pulled it up the other day it's a picture of Julian passed out on the bed you know just bl passed out perfectly passed yeah. out. With my hat on and my shoes on. And we had left a re Yelp review for a, a local McDonald's. And we were very pissed off that they weren't open after our, like, 4 a.m. excursion. You apparently were still out, like, walking trying to find your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, me and Clark were so excited because, okay, I remember we were getting ready to leave. Yeah, I was waiting on your Uber. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Julian. And he's like, oh, so you sing, too? He's like, well, go ahead. Hit something. Sing something, man. And I was like, well, no, no, I'm not going to do all that. He's like, look, man, your, your hero Alan Stone's right here. And he wants. <laughs> This is what I said. Yes. Yeah. He's like, your hero, Alan Stone, standing right here, and he's asked you to sing something. You should bust something out, man. It's a, <laughs> Hell yeah. I uh, love this story. <laughs> much better than it was. <laughs> yes, bro. So um, I, I sang uh, Kiss the Air by Danny Calvert. It's a... Uh, it's a song written by Scott Allen, who does like a lot of Broadway stuff, and I don't know why I busted out a fucking Broadway tune. We were drunk. Well, dude. let me tell you, you blew us away. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Though, man. <laughs> we, we had, we had, it's a beautiful we, song. Though, we, man. I must have had an off day the next day because I do remember us rocking through a bunch of yellow American spirits, oh. and uh, the whole night we were hanging, just laughing our asses off, being cool, and I had no idea that either of you were musicians at all, right? Uh, and it wasn't until literally we were about to get in our Toyota Prius with Julian's surgeon cousin, uh, Mauricio, who was who was knocked out cold. <laughs> <laughs> he had surgeries to do the next morning too. Um, that you that you opened your mouth and started to sing, and it was like, whoa, what? Holy shit. I mean, because and I get this a lot too, Ted. That if people go, man, you don't look like you sound. People would come with me all the time, like, oh, you don't look like you can I, sing like that. Yeah, I think that's what does it, you know? Yeah. Hey, because I still remember, I mean, I was a senior in high school, I believe. Uh, yeah, I was a senior in high school, first time I had uh, seen live from your mother's living room, mm. you know? And mm -hmm. I, I never forget hearing your voice with my friend Carson Thompson, who was like one of the most amazing singers uh, I ever still to this day. Know. Shout out she, to Carson. Yeah, she showed me that video, and I was just like... You know, you get like sometimes you just get moved by somebody and you're just like, holy shit. And from that moment on, man, I have I'll still I have to send I have to show you some of the pictures, man, because I got a picture of us from like eight years ago or something. Really? Man, when you played when you played with Tingsec in Atlanta. Bro, we just had Tingsec on the podcast like yeah. a day ago. Yeah. When you played with Tingsec in Atlanta the first time, I think I, I'm trying to remember the venue, but it, it, it might have. It, I don't know. I don't can't remember where it was at, but I feel like it was at because he had just did like an acoustic. Uh, little performance yeah just him like and his guitar i feel like it was at um so in that venue that we played at when we first met isn't there more rooms in that in that yeah, place uh, that, isn't that's there a smaller uh, room downstairs yeah, the vinyl the loft yeah. and center stage yep totally totally yeah so I, i'm almost positive that that's where 
uh, we played. Yeah, I think you played it. Uh, the loft, maybe or this. Yeah, maybe it was vinyl. Maybe it was the. the this, I think the smallest one is vinyl or something. There's there's three different of them. Yeah, I know it's like it's three different sizes or something like that. Yeah, it was for sure one of the uh, one of the definitely one of the smaller rooms. Usually is the smaller room because I think at this point I've seen you in all three of them now really I, I, yeah i believe so because i think the last one i saw you at was the center stage room right the the bigger room the or bigger room the yeah. or I, don't, I don't know which so the one bigger room i think is yeah called center stage and i do i think you're right the bottom the basement is called the loft which is interesting because it's in the basement but <laughs> yeah i can't remember how it's really uh you know really really uh divided up but. so this is steve if you can give him the ticket <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the Yelp review from the night that we met Teddy Swims in Atlanta at the Highlander. <laughs> Julian Julian says cheeseburgers? Are you kidding me? Hallelujah! I can get hash browns and sausage in the same salad. You gotta appreciate hot digits. I would recommend anybody who can afford a cheap basket of colon cancer to stop on through. <laughs> Budgets and look at Corbin Davis. Corbin Davis. <laughs> 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 this is the night. This is the night we met. What a great, great God. serendipitous moment. Hey, you know, man, I will I will say, because we talked about this on, <laughs> on our FaceTime the other day, uh, one of the most like life-changing moments about that night for me, uh, we had a conversation because I we were sitting at the Highlander still, and I had asked you this question. I was like, yo, man, is this everything you wanted to be, Al? Is this like, you know, is, is doing the music thing like super? I mean, is it is it what you like, you know, expected, expected it to be? Yeah. yeah. And you said this to me, uh, like paraphrasing, but you said this exact to me, like basically, um, you said, you know, like when I started doing this, I really just wanted to be a singer. I just like wanted to be a singer. I thought I was just going to be a singer. I just wanted to sing for everybody. You know, I wanted to travel and do what my dream of just singing, you know, and uh, I never knew that I was going to have to uh, be somebody's boss or or have mm. to like really like worry about the way that people see me or view me or the people that play with me you know you you were like kind of uh said something around the lines of uh you know sometimes we're getting ready to get on a performance and you know maybe it's one of the guys in my band's having a rough day and you know sometimes you got to go over there and tell them like look you represent us and you represent you know and these people are are here to watch you and and watch us and have they want to put all their problems aside to come see you and mm. have this just place of just pure bliss for them yeah. to enjoy, yeah. you know, and this is their, this isn't work for them. This is their place that they can come and, you know, like a sanctuary for them. And we have to build that place. And sometimes you have to turn that face on for people. And sometimes you have to, you know, you, and you have to tell mm. the guys who are playing with you, like, Hey man, pick it up. Like we yeah. can, we can talk about it later. We can, we can be upset about it later. We can, when we get on the bus tonight, we can cry about all we want. But right now it's, we're working for these people out in the crowd, you know, yeah. when it's sacred for them. And, you know, if, if, if they see that you're upset or if they, they feel some sort of negativity, they'll pick up on that. Yeah. And this is that sacred place for them. And, you know, now that I'm in this uh, place in my life, well, I guess prior to the pandemic, but even still, you know, I've, I've seen how that is, uh, that was just such a useful bit of advice that I didn't need until, mm. you know, last year. Right. Wow. And I had no idea how much that, that, piece of advice would shape me because i see that the more and more that uh i grow doing this the more introverted i kind of become oh right? wow yeah totally me you too know, i i feel like i was as coming up i was always like wanted to be just the the most biggest person in the room and want everybody looking at me i gotta be the guy i gotta be the guy i want everybody to view me as the guy now that now that if i if some days I just don't feel that way. And, you know, my girlfriend will tell me, you know, before the pandemic, we'd go out to a bar or something, you know, and she'd be like, and I'm like, I just don't know if I want to like be around people or if I want to like, I have to turn it on for people. And she's like, baby, you can, you know, you can just go to a bar and just sit at the bar. And I'm like, no, I can't because mm -hmm. I had to, you know, if somebody comes mm -hmm. up to me like, yo, Jayton, how's it been, man? How's everything going, man? I'm really proud of if I'm just like, oh, what's up, dude? You know, yeah, then I'm an creative, asshole. That yeah. turned, you know, I like have mm. built my life to be this guy that I want everybody to see me as this like 100% pumped up, so glad to see you all the time yeah. guy. And if that's not me, then I'm doing myself and you a disservice that yeah. like I have to turn that fucking guy on sometimes, mm. you know, and um, it's hard to turn it off when it's on. But shit, it's hard to turn it on some days, man. Most days, you know, yeah. most days I just want to like sit in my little 
I feel like the more and more time I go and the bigger this gets, the more introverted I become. And it's, yeah. Well, you have to be, man. I, I think that, uh, one, don't be, don't uh, attempt to try and not shame, feel shame for needing those moments alone because they're super precious. When I'm on the road, Steve will tell you, because Steve and I have toured for, for many years together, I am very much introverted because you give so much to so many people yeah. that you have to store up the, that energy. I've heard, I don't know much about energy work or we had like a spiritual advisor on uh, a couple episodes ago. She was great. We could have asked her, but empaths and, and creatives and people, I, I feel that in you, in order to be social, they have to store up energy alone. They need their time by themselves to really store up that energy so when they're present and with people, they can give. And now that you're in the spotlight and you've got a lot of people caring about you, that energy is sucked out even more, right? It's more frequent. You're out at a bar and people are going to recognize you. When you're at the show, you've got to sign things. And and the the testament to your character is that you want to be on every time. Yeah, hell yeah, and you, every time. And, and don't lose that. But, but uh, be precious with your time. So when you need to, to isolate, don't feel bad about it. Go isolate. Go play your fucking Dreamcast, dude. Get some nine hours of Dreamcast in because your energy is precious and it's finite. It, it truly is. Like yeah, you have to really store well it up. And um, I think it's, it's uh, still to this day, I mean, that's like the, the interesting thing part of this business we're in is that you and I we come from like a singer's background we we just wanted to like sing like our idols like like Bonnie like Stevie we just want to be up we want to make people feel the way that they made us feel yeah, right absolutely and but then once you once you do that and you achieve the the eyes and you achieve people like wow this is a voice we want to listen to uh, the the real the reality of that position comes into play and um and uh, I think, well, one, I think you're handling it incredibly well, which is super cool to see. And I'm very proud of you as a friend and as a human being, man, because you just emote joy and positivity in your work and in your music. Um, but definitely be precious with your time, man, and your energy, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, in so many ways for the for the pandemic and in so many ways, you know, being on the grateful side. I mean, it's sure it's been hard on everybody, but there's there's definitely so much good that has come from it you know mm. i think for for me and for, i i think for everybody it's it's society itself there's been a lot of unlearning that's happened there's been a lot of time for me to spend at home and you know in in my hometown and and seeing you know uh, un injustices that are happening even mm. in my small town that mm. were you know are just brushed under the rug and mm. you know so many things that have just come out and people being present for once in a mm. situation where everybody's just so focused on the future you know that, that i feel like we just forget to be present and yeah. i feel like uh i feel like that that the pandemic has really uh been a blessing in disguise for 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 everybody in that way that we could be really present you just kind of have to be yeah you had to know? slow slow down a little as, bit as much as you plan for the future i mean it's like that for 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 me now you know you, you plan like six months in advance and then ah oh, shit something else happens and then you got to redo your six month plan yep. and then something else happens and then you yeah gotta, but you never quit planning six months in advance you just keep changing that fucking six month plan which yep. is dog shit in so many ways but i think great and in, in, in so many ways too so yeah very well said man um you, you've you've had to isolate for yourself throughout this pandemic and so you've said you've kind of tapped into this more introverted quality of yourself that you didn't know but that kind of uh parallels with this this new found success that you've had and this popularity that you've had come into your life um did you know did you expect to be here at this point where you're at now? Oh, man. At, at this point? Not at all, I mean, because, like, or did you go, did you think you were going to go farther? Are you expecting, of course, you want to go as far as you can. But, like, did you know that at this point you'd be he kind of here? I, I mean, especially, no, especially not here with, like, with you guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure, like, sure, but, but more for yourself. Yeah, but uh, I think I think what's weird about it is when I, you know, it's almost, it's so weird. And for anybody that, uh 
is is doing you know uh, in in this industry um that is like trying to come up in this industry um the more people that i ask about this that are that are kind of seeing an uprise in their in their life it, it, it seemed like for me when when i was like waiting tables and, and i was in like a bunch of different bands and i was like grinding so hard on this and wanting just so badly or times where i just couldn't keep my lights and my water on but it didn't fucking matter i was so sure of mm. myself and mm -hmm. i knew i was gonna be like this big star and nobody could tell me shit because it was what i was like what i was destined for right yeah. like i knew that's what's supposed to be now what's what sucks about that for me is is the bigger this gets the more also that i get like so scared to death of yeah. like and so like unsure of myself yeah. right? careful what you wish for kind of thing. yeah because it feels like it feels like when nobody bought in i was so sure nobody could tell me different uh. and then as soon as like one person turns into a hundred people turns into a thousand people and so on and so on the more people that buy in and care about me the more i'm like freaked out and yeah. questioning myself and mm. doubting everything that i do and hating everything that i do and and i don't know why that is because everybody's like we got your back teddy and then now i don't have my own you wow. know and it's it's like i, I don't know if you experience that at all too but well, like, imposter syndrome. i think i think yeah. yeah that's a little bit of the imposter syndrome where you um I, I still feel it all the time. I mean, I, f I felt it like picking you up from the airport. I'm like, oh, man, like Teddy Swim's coming here. The guy can sing circles, man. Like, I, I hope he has fun. I hope he, I hope he likes me. Like, I hope this is a good trip. Every time I collaborate with anybody, I'm always like, I don't feel like I should be here because <laughs> I'm not, I don't know all the chords. I don't know the scales, right. you know. Um, there's a little bit of that. I think it's also that it's like you're you're achieving your dreams and you're experiencing these things that, even though you believed in yourself ultimately when you couldn't get, keep your lights on and couldn't keep your water running, there was still a little, pe you were like gung-ho, I gotta, I'm, I'm going to do this. There was still a little portion of your perception and your reality that was like, there's a chance it's not going to happen, right? At least for me personally, yeah, that's how sure. I felt. And yeah. then when things started going my way and people started caring, it was, I was so precious with it. I was like, it, this means the world to me and if it goes away, then all of my identity is going to go away because my my identity yeah, is wrapped up well said yeah my identity is wrapped up in this experience and this music and if that goes away then what am i and um for for many years i struggled with that with just like being so precious with it and so connected to it um that it was almost like I strangled it. And you know when you like have a new baby puppy and you love the thing so much and you're just like, I don't want to squeeze it. That's so cute. I love it so much. It kind of felt like that. Like I was so precious with it that I was like cutting off the circulation to the gift. And the gift was just the joy of music and the joy of playing and singing and collaborating and doing shit with your friends. Like that's what people want to see Teddy Swims do. People want to see Teddy Swims be Teddy Swims, right? They don't, uh, I don't think anybody expects anything from anybody yeah, I, sure. I really don't i yeah. think that unless it's and, and except for common decency like obviously there's parameters right like be be a decent person but other than that man like just have fun be yourself we want to escape for a little bit through you and what you do yeah sure. and Very um well said, man. but it, it i totally feel you man it, it can be it can be terrifying for sure it can be super terrifying um but uh but you've, I, I would imagine you've got your boys all around you. You've yeah, got a network of people I'm, around you. Do you sometimes feel like uh, you're, I mean, you're at the top of that heap. So do you feel the pressure at times with your, with your man. homies? Um, yeah, of course. But at the same time, they, they feel, you know, they, they reassure me every minute that it's, it's, it's their pressure, you know? Mm, yeah. Like when you got, when you got a julian in your life you know what i mean and when you got an alan in your life and you got you got people like that are that are on the ride with you yeah and you know man because as, as much as you just give and give and give you know it, it, it's amazing to have those people with a fall back that say like yo that's not your pressure man like we got you mm, yeah totally you know we got you you gotta man because i ask any of them they're like dude i don't want that at all i never <laughs> wanted that to be that guy you know right. like, like i got your back like i just you do you do that that shit and we 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 got the rest of it you know yeah. and, and it's it's i find it um i find it harder sometimes uh you know because i i they're so precious to me um that that it's hard to trust them 
right with certain things mm, because yeah. they're so precious to me that like i would never ever ever like you know I, I will say even those times where it was hard and i was working at chili's and i was in all these bands and i was doing all that this is harder of a life than that was i wouldn't trade it for anything i wouldn't do anything differently and i damn sure wouldn't trust anybody else with those guys mm. i damn sure wouldn't trust anybody else with with the with the lives that we're touching you know yeah but yeah at the same time i i find it yeah that i that they're so precious to me and i love them so much that it's hard to trust myself and it's hard to trust them sometimes because yeah. like they're 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 everything to me they're yeah my babies you know they got yeah. my back they're everything to me so yeah man making that's... sure they're straight making sure their bills are paid and they're gonna have kids one day making sure that those those is my kids those is my babies you know like making sure that that's 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 just the only thing to me that it will always always be in the forefront of my mind is is yeah making sure they're okay and their their bills are paid and you know taking that responsibility to do that and they they never ever ever asked that of me ever they would have they would have been still you know a plumber and and playing guitar whenever i needed jesse to he would have gladly did that you mm. know, for the rest of his life it gladly did that man but i just it's so crazy man how like awesome. your, the stakes get higher <clears throat> And you get something, you have something to lose now, you know, whereas before when you were working at Chili's and you were like grinding and you had so much perceived care about what it was that you were doing. Now you have this like real deep care of like messing it up or letting it go or doing the wrong thing, taking the wrong step. But that's so, it's such an ironic uh, yeah. reality to, to, yeah. to how that all works out, you know. And Have you guys ever been in a relationship like that? Like you... I've been in relationships, romantic relationships where I didn't really care that much and it wasn't that precious. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason it flipped and I started to really care and she didn't, it wasn't precious to her anymore. And yeah. like the, literally the chemical change mm -hmm. that happens, like nothing changes in the relationship. Like we're still together. We still hang out. We're still a pair but the chemical imbalance of like, no, I want this more than you do now. Yeah. Like that's almost how it feels with the music thing when yeah. when yeah, when people yeah. start caring about you. It's like, oh no, no, I, I need this, I need it now. Totally. Whereas we before the the music was an outlet. The music was like the joy, right? And the the, the thing that you did, um you were you were serious about it, but you know, it was like you were constantly striving for it or like you, you cared in a different way. And then when it, when, um, it starts paying your bills and when you start identifying with it, uh, that's when it's like you, you can, you can, and I've done it so many times. I still do it today. Like with, with a lot of creative projects that I do, I'm just like, I don't, I don't want anybody to see this, you know, this is terrifying. <laughs> Cause it means something now, right? Before it was just like just throwing paint at the wall and hoping something sticks. And you know, now you're like a muralist and you're like, Oh, I got to really like fucking shade. I want, this mustache better look great on old, you know, man. Uh, there's, there's this guy, uh, have you ever met or heard of Dallas Wilson? Uh, 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 uh he, he, uh, man, he's the guy that, um, that wrote and, uh, was in the band, uh, closing time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Not Dallas. What was it? Corbin Dan Dallas, Wilson. Dan, Dan, Dan Wilson. Dan Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Corbin so. Davis. <laughs> Corbin Davis. <laughs> Corbin Davis. <laughs> well, cut that out. I, I'm so he's gonna be so upset that I forgot his name. And Dallas. Not da yeah. Dan Wilson. Dan so, Wilson. Legend uh, of a writer. Yeah. Man. Dan Wilson. Don't don't use that. Uh, that I said Dallas. I mean, he's gonna kill me. Uh, <laughs> Have you written with Dan? I was thinking about I was thinking about Dallas Davis. Yeah, yeah. So Dan, uh, we had did a Zoom uh, not too long ago, right? And uh, um, he he's been working on these cards, and he's got a whole stack of cards, and uh, he's like he's like starting to kind of produce them, and uh, it's like I, I forgot how many exactly he's got, but he's gonna start, and they all just have, um, they all just have these like little tids bits of like, you know just advice or like uh. just happiness to them while you're writing right and it's just stuff about writing yeah and he uh he showed me this one because he was just reading them to me while he had them all spread across his table and he would just like flip one over and show me a couple of them and uh there was this one that hit me so deeply uh he said uh you know take heed to the songs that you write that you're afraid to show somebody because there's a very good chance that it's a really good song yeah 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 mm. and i thought that just like forever it it you know just it's a it's a it's a 
overthinking, you know, it's a, yeah, I feel that way all the time, you know, where I'm like, I'm so stoked about something, but then I'm like, it's easy for me to show like maybe Jesse, cause I think he'd like it. Or like, maybe it's like, I'm so stoked about it while I'm writing it. But then as soon as I take it to like show the boys and be like, all right, y'all yeah, check this out. Then I'm like, oh shit, this mm. is terrible. Everything's terrible. I sound like shit. Everything sucks. And I'm was that like, always the case for you? Or is that like mostly now in like the last few years? Well, I think, I think we all have a, uh. I think we all just hate our own voice, you know? Like, I yeah, think, it's hard to listen to. Yeah, I no, love mine. That's great, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, man. That's great. I'm so envious of that, man. I don't. Okay, because, like, you even hear my voice talking, you know, speaking. I just, like, hate, hate my voice, man. And I don't uh, think that ever goes away. Yeah. It's, uh, you can learn. I've learned to, like, block it out a little bit more and yeah. separate from it. Um, but, yeah, like, if you... The, whenever you have to listen back to your voice over and 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 over again, I don't think anybody would go through that situation at the tenth time listening to the same line, going like, "Man, I like this more now than when I started." It's just, I think sounds are. It happens on the radio. You the pop song comes on the radio, like the first listen, you're like, "That's a hit song." The fifth time you hear it, you're like, I don't ever want to hear that yeah, song again. Done. Please never play that again. Um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about your because you're you've you signed a major a big major label deal recently, and you've you came out with your first single, which is so sick. Broke. I'm glad you like it. Man. It's uh, awesome. featuring Thomas Rhett, who's a legend of a human being. I'm so glad that you went like country vibes with a country artist on that tune because it's it's uh it's a soul song it's like a soul hip-hop funk song and uh and thomas just knocked it out of the part with that feature on yeah it. which is was nuts to me man so uh yeah julian bunetta him uh kendo and Schweez, uh they're this uh, twins from uh they call themselves two fresh beats we had we wrote this uh you know back and right right before the pandemic i mean <laughs> at the time i was like we were talking about earlier um i was i was in la and i was waiting for the whole team to come out and meet me in la so um we had wrote the original version before the one featuring thomas rett and uh we wrote it and man it was just like coming from that absolute place of because we were still on tour and uh, my, my, my manager at the time was like all right well look if you want all 11 of your buddies to come out to LA we're gonna have to get an Airbnb for a month that's gonna sleep 12 um that's gonna be you know like 35 grand to do that you yeah know? and yeah and uh I was like bro like absolutely not he's like I mean it's going out of like the label's paying for that you know and I was like no man my little brother's going to college next year that's like his tuition dude i'm never no absolutely not like yeah. I'm, I'm like in fighting tears like no absolutely not like I, I i cannot i cannot accept something like that you know and um i was like man i did so long i was and, and so when i was explaining that situation to you know julian and kendall and Shweez about that i was like dude i'm so used to being broke that i like would never i couldn't still to me money is so precious and so like such a such a finite little resource to yeah, me that yeah. even that i'm financially stable now it's like i can't i mean i'm still i remember luke my manager saying like uh, there was one time he, uh, they were, I think Wills Fargo was going to charge me like $40 to transfer this money of mine from this account to this account. And I was like, no, I'm not paying no $40 to transfer my money from one account in their bank to another account in their bank. That's absolutely ridiculous. He's like, look, man, eventually you're just going to have to chop it up to just like the cost of doing business. And I was like, no, you're going to have to call them and say like, waive this. <laughs> Knock it off. You know, yeah. and immediately they're like, oh, oh yes, Mr. Swams. <laughs> you know, like, of course we can waive that. Yeah, Teddy like, going to sink your ship if you don't yeah. give me a yeah, freebie. But, like, you know, there's just, there's just like my, my, sh I just, I can't, to me it's so finite and so like special. And um, so uh, I think Julian had been on like a, a boat with Thomas or something like that when he was out in Nashville and, played him this song like let me show you this kid teddy swims i'm working on and uh he's like yo i love this song i want to work with teddy i want to you know i want to and uh so he asked him like you want to do a remix of this song we'll do another verse on it and at first i did not think that it was i mean i'm a huge thomas rett fan obviously but i did not think that that was 
possible. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, that's going to be kind of weird, to be honest. And yeah. then I heard the first cut of it and was like, oh, my God. He just so authentically just brought himself to something. Perfect. I can't. To me, I still have that issue. I feel like I feel like if you throw me in 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 a in a metal band or a hip hop like song then that like, i'm like bringing that to it like i don't know how that i could just like if i was a country artist put me on anything and i'm bringing myself fully and authentically right. country as yeah. hell on anything you put me in you know and he just was so like authentically him and i i got a chance to like write with him a couple of days man him and his buddy josh and uh julian and uh Man, he literally, uh, I got to see his house, meet his family, and he really is just, it's so wonderful when you meet a hero of yours and they're just exactly who. Super down. Yeah, who you think they are, and they're just the most amazing. He is like a reincarnate of Jesus Christ. Man. He he's seems the, like such a sweet guy, man. He's the best guy ever. <laughs> so cool. The sweetest guy. He just released that uh, Dos Primos tequila. Um, he's what? got his own tequila. Yeah, him and his cousin. Let's get Let's some. get him yeah, on the dude, phone, dude. It's, it's great, man. Send some to the lodge, Tom. Yeah, it's really good shit, man. Uh, it's it's good. It's a good tequila. Every, it seems like everybody's coming out with tequilas now, bro. We're gonna have to we double in on a, on a. We, double can we down, do it? Double down. Can we do a? Oh, what would we call it? I don't know. We'll we'll come up with something after the show. But damn, mango habanero. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yes, <laughs> Georgia dude. bourbon, baby. Ooh. Yeah. That, no, that sounds disgusting. Are you a tequila? <laughs> are you a tequila drinker? I'm. I'm Teddy. A I'm a tequila. Sh so I didn't really start getting into tequila until um, we went on tour, and then that became like the. Uh, we <clears throat> always do this thing called power hour and you know it's like an hour before you get on stage yep. you just slam as much as you can and of course you try to get in that sweet spot you know that, <laughs> yeah i've been there that hour that power hour you just try to get that sweet little sweet spot you we'll know get that. there and uh so tequila became like my my shoot drink but i will always be like a kind of bourbon on the rocks kind of guy but <clears throat> tequila is like my if we're getting if, if we're having a good night i'll have some bourbon on the rocks but if we're like if we know we're setting out to just get shitty then, <laughs> yep, yep then tequila shots is yeah. the way to go sure yeah. thing baby sure thing That's i awesome. just always when i i'm off the piss right now but when i'm on the piss i'm just trying to get shitty I don't enjoy the taste of alcohol. I like I like having a party with my buds, you know. Yeah, I got you. You so, and me are gonna have some tequila sips. Yeah, yeah but I I man, I probably love the taste of alcohol too much. Oh, oh really? Be honest, man. What's I, your favorite? Is it whiskey? Yeah, that, that's I love the one. Some bourbon, man. I love it so much. Oh, look at his yeah. face, bro. Look at his face I right now. I'll, He's cut, just I'll like, cut back. I, I don't I don't have a problem. Like I, I have uh, I, I don't I never I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where it was like a real real problem. Like. Like, you know, now I've kind of turned myself into like drinking on the weekends or on like vacation occasions. Or yeah. Like, you know, I'll probably drink a little bit more while I'm with you guys this week than I, I normally will allow myself. Oh, uh, yeah, but, dude. We got a catheter yeah. down in your bedroom. Yeah, but I'm treating this kind of a little bit more like a vacation. Yeah. So I might, yeah. you know, if I drink a little bit every day, like it's not like that usually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've definitely cut back a lot, man, because it was that was a while there, man, where I just ah oh, fucking love, love, yeah, dude, drinking, getting it you know? in, yeah. getting it in, man. Especially like early when I first started touring. Um, the one of the first bands we ever tur toured with was this band named Jack's Mannequin. They were kind of like oh, a pop yeah. pop punk band. Absolutely, no Jack's Mannequin. And those guys, fucking rage, dude. They go for it. And I think at that point in my life, I was going for it too. But um, they taught you so. They taught times. you know. They just they taught me how to do it. For me, because uh, well, you're 28. Yeah. Yeah. So like more recently, when I've been touring, I've had to give the drink, leave the drink behind, because there were so many moments. Do you how do you, how does your voice go on the road? Man, I don't. It's so like. I, I don't I, to me it's it's so crazy because i've i've literally there's been one time in my life that i've ever ever lost my voice and it had nothing to do with even it was just like a sickness that i've had but yeah. i've literally never had my voice like 
just never goes. It just wow. I don't know How what do you preserve it, it is. Do it you just, do like vocal warm ups and stuff, or do you just yeah, show I mean, up I and do it? Yeah, I warm up, but like, and I drink a lot of water, man. When we're on set, like we're doing a set, I'll go through like eight or nine bottles of water. I'll chug one between every damn song. You going Irish like, Spring or you going Dasani? Uh, we, we, as long as it's room temperature, baby. That's all that matters okay. to me. It's got to like that's the only thing I'll be a diva about. It's like I need my room temps, but like <laughs> other than that, though, doggy, that's it. But, <laughs> but I don't know, man. I just like I feel like I. I treat myself like shit on tour, bro. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I just, Who I mean, doesn't? obviously, obviously, that's not gonna last forever. And I should just like really, yeah. <clears throat> which has been great about the pandemic is also another blessing in disguise was you know taking some like, time to chill out on the mm. drinking man because yep. on tour bro we was just you know you you start drinking and drinking and drinking and then after the show you're drinking and then you sleep and then you wake up and you feel like shit and the only way to get through it is to get to the next venue and start drinking again yeah. and then next thing you know you're you're getting home 30 days later and you're like <sighs> <laughs> like just <laughs> feeling like dog shit yeah. yeah hurting man sore and yeah and it's also too like early stages of touring like you're you're most likely in like a sprinter van so you're not getting to the hotel till two and you're waking up at like six in the morning so that you can get to the venue by load in me and julian did this like promo tour oh uh, what would have been november of 2018 i think I don't even any know. And it was it's a promo tour, so we were playing small rooms like the Crocodile. We've sat size yeah. in Seattle, and uh, so we were vanning it. We took a van. It's been man, it's been years since I've been in a van. You get in a tour bus, you're like you can sleep at night. You know, you can you really get your rest in. And sleep on tour is like essential towards life in general, yeah, right? Sure. Um, and yeah, same thing, man. We get to the we get to the hotel at two. We're like just we loaded out we're like maybe a couple tequilas in we're up at six the next morning we're like that was insane ah, i don't <laughs> this is uh, this is insane yeah. right yeah we 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 only got so we would get uh so when we went out you know we go with a big package it was 12 of us when we went out because we had our content got our whole family kind of the whole team went and uh we we took two sprinter bands and uh you know because six in one and six in the other and uh but I mean, we only got Airbnbs on our off days, which were, you know, maybe a few of those. But other than that, man, it was Walmart parking lots. You know, we were just, I was savage sleeping, sleeping nice, on the couch dude. in the Sprinter van in a fucking so Walmart parking lot. Kind of a lot. rite of passage, though, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to do it. You yeah. got to do it. But, oh, Fucking my a. God, never again. Yeah. But I, that was so miserable. Steve because knows that, about that life. Yeah, oh, dude. Steve knows about Walmart <laughs> parking lots. There's a new app. There's an app out there my friends were telling me about. Uh, it's like an RV app and it'll show you across the country like what all the parking lots that you can sleep in per state right you can go here and there's a walmart parking lot here um that would have came in real handy right about 2011 when i started touring and sleeping in vans uh do you do, are you renting those sprints yeah we rented the sprint yeah, yeah. and so we have it we have a van so our first couple like one-offs is teddy swims we did a it was like Christmas of 2019, yeah, we had did our first like Teddy Swim show. We had a, um, we had like a private gig. We did a Christmas show for mm. uh, this guy Brian Fargo, who runs like In Exile Games. Mm. Um, and so we were like, well, let's just do a, you know, let's do a show in LA while we're out here. A little 300 cat room at the Satellite we played, and it was our first like out of state Teddy Swim show. It was so cool, exciting. Cool as shit, man. Yeah. But we took the van you know 15 passenger van with 12 of us in it and you it drove went, from georgia yes 40 hours <laughs> man, and it was the most god awful experience in my life i just i i was so thankful that we kind of had like the first tour i ever did to uh was one before that with my buddy tyler which is kind of what made teddy swims uh tyler carter and uh my buddy addy maxwell who plays guitar with me now um weirdly was a was like a rap tour so that's like kind of what started teddy swims okay. i was in elephants but uh we had like addy was making beats for like rappers in atlanta and stuff and um we'd just send him out and then finally one night he was like yo let's uh let's write a rap song let's just see what happens you know yeah. and we wrote this shitty rap song right and uh my buddy tyler comes over he's like yo i'm he's in this band issues or was at the time and he's like yo i'm gonna uh i'm going on my solo little pop tour and uh 
you guys have more of this. Like, y'all can come open up. I'd rather my homies open up for me, right? And so we are like, well, we got one rap song. <laughs> and he's like, look, I'll be back in a month. Give me 30 minutes, songs, yeah. and then we'll, we'll, we'll go. And that was like the first tour I ever did, as weirdly enough, as a rapper, after all these years of singing and uh wow. man, you did but, a tour of just rapping yeah it was straight what it was straight like soundcloud rap it was i have to show you some of the stuff later on as teddy swims yeah and that's what wow. kind of started teddy swims wow. Was, uh, wow, no was, way. yeah and so uh my my best friend uh luke who's like my manager now he was living in la at the time he was a um you know, uh, online marketing manager of Hello Kitty. Um, mm. And so he had came to our LA show and he's like, look, man, I, I don't know if you want to like pursue this rap thing, but like, I've seen you in all your bands, but like, there's something special about Teddy Swims, like the solo guy, like, you know, whether it's, and, you know, you definitely should be singing, but like people love you as like, like you know he's like i see you in your like 80s hair metal band doing your bar gigs and like slicked hair and the like whole eyeliner you know you're always like or in the metal band you're like doing the screams and the you know he's like that was the only time i've ever seen you like be just authentically like you by yourself on stage uh, and be yeah. something you know and be you and he's mm -hmm. like we just got to find a way to make that like something but i mean i was lucky enough to go on my first tour in a sprinter and not have to do the whole like band thing because mm. for just that la and back i it was the most miserable experience of my life i if i would have had to coming up like right out of high school do van tours i don't know if i would have ever been able to do it dude i really don't it was the most miserable i just i suck at sleeping already man i have nightmares and just suck it suck bad at sleeping i wake up every 20 30 minutes as it uh, is so it just was uh, like dude we're gonna get we're gonna get you a solid three hours in the room we got you, baby. Yeah, I hope so, man. Because I do it, it, mattress. It, it literally, man. Me and and I would only sleep with Christian, my bassist, man, because he's the only one that really like could tolerate the way that I, I wake up and just be just kicking his ass, just like, oh y'all love it hot in this motherfucker, don't you? <laughs> it's hot as shit in here. <laughs> <laughs> I just like <laughs> when I, I'd wake up just, just sweating the heat. <laughs> he, he, shh, shh, baby, it's alright now. Go back to sleep, baby. Baby, baby, back to sleep, baby. It's fine. Relax, relax. <laughs> oh y'all just fucking love it hot in here. <laughs> Dude. And our buddy Doran, man, uh, he's got this thing. I've never heard anybody do this when they sleep. Um, he like moans when he sleeps, right? Can you give us some? Yeah, Doran's gonna kill me for saying this. <laughs> Shout out to Doran. But he's, he, he'll sit there and just. He'll do that. So like, I remember when we was just on our last tour, right? Joel, uh, my buddy Joel, who's. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, he'll do this. For it's hours. so good in the microphone, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> nice that I got that in my dome. So perfect. But, uh, I'll tell you, and he'll get loud with the shit too, right? And so, uh, Joe, we got little little bunks. You know, they got the three bunks on this side, three. And so, dude, we we in the middle of the night. We get a text. Uh, I'm sitting up in the front. Uh, somebody's driving right and he texts at first the first night on tour he's like man Doran's having some good dreams low-key kind of jealous right <laughs> a week goes later and you know how it is when you're in those close quarters and you start just getting pissed off at each other right right later on man it's about a week later it's no games Punching anymore him in the face he's kicking he's like Doran <laughs> shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> Every night. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my god! We, my my first uh, touring experience. We got a gig. Um, same like essentially the same thing. Like our first go of it. Uh, Steve's partner, you met Laura earlier, was our tour manager, and was like, okay, I can't afford like enough hotel rooms for everybody to get their own bed so we had seven people in the touring unit so it's like i'll share a bed laura will you share will you share a bed with me we're best friends right and she's like okay so like for the first year and a half laura and i shared a bed and one one, one evening or one, one morning laura looks at me and you know i, I kind of wake up and she's kind of looking side eye at me and i'm like what's up what, what's going on she's like do you you remember anything last night no what's going on she's like bro you sat up in the middle of the night you go 
sit up straight like this in the bed and go, hotties. And then she goes, and you lay right back down. <laughs> oh, it's making me cry. Oh, that. That's the best. <laughs> we, 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 because it was me, her, and my friend Greg, Gary Ehrlich, who you saw his name tag fell today. They both were awake still, so they look at each other. They're like, he's fucking with us. Yeah. He can't, that can't be real. And sure enough, like, I don't remember it at all. It was the, one of my best moments of all time, I guess, sleeping, getting some laughs. <laughs> that reminds me of the uh, yeah, I see Night at the Roxbury. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. great flick. It's Underappreciated. It's coming to take me away because yeah. the sight of you stopped my heart. <laughs> 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 we're, definitely, we're definitely watching that on this trip, man. Yeah, definitely so some Night at the Roxy. My favorite movie, man. I feel like those... Uh, those shitty situations are so necessary in your process towards getting there. It's so funny too, because you know, for people that don't know you now, probably don't, they don't know your backstory. They don't know like the time that you've spent putting all this effort into uh, yeah. getting your fucking ass kicked and like eating shit for so long and trying to do this, you know, like all of a sudden you're like, you know, relatively successful you got this big following people know about you now and they're just like yo where'd teddy swims come from like he just showed up overnight, overnight. Yeah. yeah and it's like this this such this funny uh uh preconceived idea that like people just kind of just happen all of a sudden and it's so good this f format just to be able to talk about like yeah, where you came real. from um and you know what you've been doing and it's uh, it's all such a, it's part of the, your rite of passage to have to go through all that bullshit to get to this point. But I didn't know any of that stuff. And even like when we met you the first time, six, seven, however many years ago that was, it was like, it's so interesting because I'm sitting there from what you're telling me, I'm just like, oh yeah, like sing to your hero, Alan Stone. And like, now we're regarding you, man, as a fucking hero. Right. And it's so cool. And it's, we like the ch everything changes and shifts. And like, it's so interesting how that all happens because we wouldn't know you otherwise, as other than just being a fan who's this this person. Man, and, and at the time, like, like I said, I was, I was, I was waiting tables, man. I was like, working two separate jobs and and i had i was in like five different bands at the time like i said teddy swim started as this as this uh as this uh rap project weirdly but i was i was in my band elephants who still plays with me now i was in this band weld heart where we're kind of country alternative band i was in this band called demolicious at the time we were like this 80s hair metal band yes. which did covers so, of playing bars so, yeah it was mixed between demolition and delicious right demolicious was yeah like, and then i was in this uh 60s kind of soul band we were playing like little weddings and stuff and i was just like and i'm still in metal bands man uh, this band called eris and i had been doing that since i got out of high school like and so i had i was just like doing whatever the fuck i could anywhere i could possibly do it just singing whatever i could sing whenever i could still trying to do like the community theater thing if i could at any time and just trying to do whatever the hell i could to mm, just be heard you know and all it took was a getting my friends together and just having a vision of just like wait a minute man if, if, if you record songs and you know i got this band and then you, you film and and you you know you you take pictures and you design like why don't we all just like put our fucking heads together and yeah just like that's the coolest thing we won't yeah. need nobody if yeah. we can do that and it's 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 super admirable that you took that you tr attempted all of those different lanes and we're literally trying to explore your own creative voice like through you know heavy metal music through rap through all of these different kind of uh genres of yourself of music and of of what you're capable of doing do you think that where you landed with like soul music the way that you sing now and how you're kind of represented as an artist is is the way that you would ho have hoped to land i still don't know man i think i'm never ever i don't know if, if the point is to ever feel like you just know your sound and you've paved your way sure. yeah yeah if you're just forever supposed to be like i don't know i'm still missing a part of me what's so cool is that you could literally sing the phone book teddy and that's, i would that's alan stone right no there, that's man. like a that's constantly i we've been listening and jamming to your music in the house the last month since we talked on the phone and i was like yeah teddy's gonna come and uh god damn man yeah. you can sing your ass off it's so cool totally. to uh to get to hear you real quick though i pulled up a clip for yeah, you i'd like uh, stevie baby rock. i'd like you to switch over to the computer please and uh we're just gonna play <laughs> this little guy this, you know dude. what i heard when i first met you yeah what <laughs> Hotties. <laughs> what do you 
are you doing? That's an ambulance coming to take me away. Because the, the side of you stopped my heart. Willie Farrell's, man. So good. So what a legend. Hey, hey, yeah. hey. Is um, that a mirror in your pocket? <laughs> yeah, he, that's, that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Early times. Because right when they come out, this Will is like Perry's. 43 seconds later, and yeah. I'm like, man, yeah. stop, yeah. man. <laughs> um, <laughs> Teddy and Alan, with all due respect, like Al- Alan's voice is without Incredible. question phenomenal. He has a, a style and, and a lane, and he stays in that thing, and he can sing all sorts of places. He can sing the phone book himself, but he sings the phone book the way that he sings it that's kind of – in 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 the in the tone of his voice and in the in the style that he has that he's cultivated for himself that is very much Alan Stone. It seems like you can you have like all of these different kinds of styles of singing with your own voice as well that you can potentially tap into later on in your career or whenever you really want to. Like like you do, do you sing like metal? Yeah, still. I mean, every once in a while we still kind of we still kind of uh break away and because there's always gonna be that like itch that i like gotta gotta scratch you know like that's that's where like there's i, I feel like with you know with, with anything like with, with music people people go to certain genres for for certain feelings right you know there's there's just certain things about heavy music with anger that you just can't get out with mm. with r&b and soul totally, you know, yeah. know what i mean and there's 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 certain things about hip-hop that like just build yourself up and are just like I'm the shit and I'm the man that you just can't have. And are there certain moments of like love and storytelling that you can get out of country music that you can't totally, get, you know? Yeah. And I feel like people go to those for, for those, those feelings and those yeah. things. And I feel like doing, doing that, that certain thing you, you just can't, I, I get so terrified of, you know, like what, what I get terrified of is, is somebody going to me for something and then only wanting that from me because I don't, when I was first like doing like the label meetings and stuff like that and trying to, you know, like show people and, and, and so many people would be like, oh man, we could, we could like really market you as like the male Adele, right? And Adele is like one of the most prolific, amazing, wonderful, incredible songwriter, singers of all time right we all can agree about that but at the end of the day i know that when i go see adele i'm going to the fox theater i'm taking my girl and we're all getting nice and dressed up and everybody's watching her and we're gonna cry for a little bit and we're gonna dance for a little bit and then we're gonna you know i I just don't ever want i don't want that to ever be my situation i always want you want to keep people guessing yeah and i and and i i feel like i got so many things i gotta scratch and itch and Mm -hmm. say and there's just only certain ways to say it and there's certain ways to do it and i get so terrified of ending up in like a box that i don't want to be in and um I mean, I, I we'll we'll just later on. We'll just have to. I'll play you guys some records that we've been working. Can't on. Wait, we've please, been, man. we've been. I mean, we're probably sitting on like two hundred of them now at this point over this last year that we've just been writing, and I'm just lost on like who I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be mm. doing, and like my sound because I feel like everybody's got this like expectation of what it's supposed to be and what it's supposed to sound like or what they expect or want out of me and i don't even fucking know what i want you know? yeah i so. think i think um you hit it on the head there uh teddy that that you you may not know and you may not ever know exactly where it is exactly you land i think uh i always stand on the laurels of like when i'm in the studio and when, when i'm in the space i'm 100 percent present and everything that i'm doing in that moment i'm in love with but really the cool part about music is people can interpret you and what you're singing in any way they want and how you're singing it in any way you want. So you don't, I don't think you ever really need to feel stationary and like, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm D'Angelo and that's it. And like, I can only, you know, have chocolate milk flowing down my pecs and that's it. That's my only trick. I think you can, you, you, there's room nowadays specifically with the influx of the internet and how many things are readily available constantly and how quick those cycles are. Yeah, people don't care anymore about, no, about the, 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 the thing or the genre. You know, they, I feel like in this day and age, we're so lucky because um, 
in in one way we're really lucky because people care about a person and and, and about um how close they can be to a person and how like how they can feel like they can relate to a person like i feel like we're we're past the times of let's say like drake may be um just as successful or potentially man probably has more number ones has done better than like michael jackson for instance right, right? but he will never be um as like as just adhered as like God's status like that, right. you know, because when you're coming up back then, you see artists that were just the ones that were put in front of you were the ones that there were. And you didn't get that like inside look at their life. You don't follow them on Instagram and Twitter. So much and, more mystery. And yeah. Yeah. There was just so much more. Mis there was mis mystery and there was so much like more profile to them. And they were just like gods, like deities, you know, and I feel like that that space is so gone now that that fat guys like myself and goofy, funny people are like able to just be people and people can say like, yo, I'm a fat bearded guy and I'm this same fat, goofy bearded guy. And if Teddy can do that, then like, that's totally me. I'm yep. like, that's, that's me. I'm that yeah. guy, you know? And I feel like everybody can gravitate towards an artist now and like really find whatever it is that they're looking for and like really feel like they're part of something and really feel like they, they can connect with something on a human level, yeah. which didn't exist in music before. No. Yeah. Cause there's more choice in it now. Yeah. Like you can assimilate, you can assemble the stuff that you actually connect with. And there's so much of it now, which is, I think some, some people on the business side of the world will be like, that's the most frustrating thing in the world because you, you can't like, you can't keep the, you don't have a gate to, to close anymore as like a, 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 a gatekeeper. Right. But, um, but as an audience member and as like a fan of art, it's, there's so much good shit out there. There's so many people doing it themselves and making really quality stuff that like my, my joy always has been finding a new artist and that new artist having two or three albums out. My most recent artist that I got into that I was obsessed with is this girl named Madison Cum Cunningham. And uh, she had like two records out. She's been doing her thing. And when I found her, it was like day in, day out obsession. Watch every video. Listen to every song on repeat. When I'm in the, in the morning with Rudy, I'm listening to every tune. And, um, and then three months later, I find a new one. And I'm like, and these aren't top 10 selling artists. These are like mom and pop shops, right? This is like your, your mom and pop restaurant that's three blocks away from your house that serves the dopest Chinese food you've ever had. But they're not franchised. They just got one store. Now entertainment, which never used to be like that, is, is now able to be like that. There's so many people out there who can make a living, make music, and do the thing without having to be Drake which yeah. is really exciting for, for somebody. I feel like there's also a, a, a negative side to that coin too, because, you know, like I, I remember coming up and, uh, you know, when, when the MySpace and things first started and, and kids were doing it independently and I was finding these, these pop punk bands that like nobody had heard of, right? And I was like so excited about them and I'm in like seventh grade and me and Jesse are going back and forth on these like little pop punk bands. We'd find one and on their top friends would be this and we'd go down this rabbit hole and yeah, we'd find this band yeah. that has like a thousand friends and it would be like so cool and yeah. sick and, and new to us and then we'd tell our friends next thing you know this band would start blowing up and it'd be like Psh, fuck that band <laughs> yeah yeah you yeah. know because it was like it was so much cooler when it was a mom and pop shop like yeah. it was so much like it was so much cooler when it was like before everybody caught on that sometimes you feel like i feel like that that, that gets an issue too because you know you never want to it, it's it like you, you never you, you i i have to always tell myself like don't do that don't be like that just yeah. because your favorite artist is all of a sudden like you know like this level now don't be like oh man i i knew teddy swims when teddy swims was like just put out michael jackson video dude he had like two thousand followers now he's like signed to warner records and it's like 
I mean, I don't know if that's happening to me, but what I'm saying is like, you Julian know, I, was doing it earlier I did. today. Yeah, was, I was calling, I was talking so I, much I, shit. I, I do that all the time myself where it's like, <laughs> I wasn't, I hope you know that, <laughs> but you know, not even about me, but you right. know, just anything. Like I do that all the time to myself and I just have to be like, damn, but it's also just so much like you could click on this video on YouTube and this video on YouTube. And what sucks about so much music coming out, it's like, you got like five seconds to grab my attention, man. Yeah. You got five seconds. And if, if that first like 10 seconds of the song does doesn't really like move me immediately i'm clicking on the next yeah, suggested yeah. video and it sucks because like now i see how much like fucking work goes into that me and my friends have been building this for 10 years and we finally got something we're proud of and if you don't like it in the first 10 seconds you're moving on yeah it's tough but uh, to re play devil's advocate to that point um yes that is the truth my wife would call that australians call it tall poppy syndrome she's like yeah all these australian actors they'll be cool in Australia, but then when they have a hit movie in the States, everybody in Australia tar starts talking shit about them. Yeah. Ah, fuck, yeah, you know. Um, I think that's definitely true, but I think that only kind of happens amongst people who, like, art is so sacred to them that when the art, when, when like, the masses see the art, it takes away the sacredness because they think that they are the only person that can see the beauty in that art. Me. I am the only one who can hear Teddy Swim sing and realize that he's incredible. And then everybody else does it and they're like, I'm not that special. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not as special yeah. as I thought I was. But also too, I've been thinking about this a lot, man, recently because nowadays we live on like one of the biggest selling records in 2020 will probably barely sell 40,000 copies in its first week. There's 350 million people in America. Is that, tr is that an actual, is that true? Um, I mean, obviously there's, I just a don't know. Adele, just Adele will curious. sell millions of records when she released, when Beyonce will sell millions of records. But like, I mean, it used to be back, back in the 80s and 90s when they were carrying physical albums in Targets and Kmarts, like to sell a million copies of a record was not that big of a deal. A lot of people were moving those that way. Nowadays, to sell a million copies, you are at, you're the biggest artist of all time. If you're selling a million uh -huh. copies, that's, you're flooded with Grammys. It's, it's, a, it's a huge achievement. There's 350 million people just in the United States. So to carve out your corner of people who have your back and love you and come to your shows, you may not be selling out arenas. You may, you may be tapping out at 1,200 cap rooms, but like that's a great living and you get to do your art, your art and you get to have people backing you and you get to be creative. Yeah, and you're and, and 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 that's the most beautiful thing to me is that you, you know, I have to all the time tell myself like I'm, um, my manager says all the time like you know you you might not like everything or you might not you're not bound, to you're not bound to none of that, mm -hmm. you know like the like the song you release right now, you're gonna hear it a million times. There's gonna be a million different versions of it you're gonna listen to it a million times in the music video you're gonna do so many things to it by the time it comes out you're just like damn it i hate this song i'm over this song I'm... you're not bound by it there's gonna be another song there's gonna be another chance there's yeah. gonna be you're not you're not bound by unless it's like obviously like a huge hit that you're playing for the next like 20 years or something and thank but, god yeah but i think i think um uh i guess what i'm sensing is from you teddy is like this um man i don't i don't want to be pigeonholed i don't want like what i release i want it to be i want to be proud of it in 10 years yeah. and um i've released songs that i wasn't proud of when i released them and every time they get requested i'm a little bit like i don't want to play that song but i've had to reframe it throughout like my life and my quote-unquote career that the songs aren't for me the songs are for them. I'm bringing them this this joy and this release. Like when I release a music, and when I'm in the studio, it's precious to me, right? But like maybe a week later, you're like, God, that song's not yeah, as cool as I thought it was, you know? But everybody on the team, everybody at the label, everybody who, you're, who you trust is like, that's a, that's a hit. That's a good song. You should release that, right? And so you release it and you're like, maybe like, oh, I don't know if I'm really stoked about that. I can sing better than that. I missed some notes there. You know, the harmonies were like, whatever. And, um, and I always find solace in like, this is this, I, I'm like, I'm a healer. 
with what I do. I'm, I'm healing other people. And if this thing that, that uh, brings them joy, um, if I've got to sacrifice a little bit, you know, to be like, this is for you, it's actually really rewarding to make that choice in the moment and go, yeah, yeah, that, we're, we're doing this and this is for you. And, and uh, even if you do, even if this does happen, which I can't imagine it's going to because, because um, all of the shit you release is epic. But if it does happen to you where you look back and you're like, God, I don't really like that song as much. Take that deep dive and go, ah, this is for them. This is, this is, this is for the people. This is for my fans who, who fucking love it and don't hear it that specific way that I do. Um, yeah, I just miss the, uh, you know, when, when we were touring too, that's like, that's the hardest part of, of not being able to do it now is it, you, you don't get the, you don't get the, the best A&Rs in the world to tell you what's great now, yeah. you know, because right now all I have is my buddies and the label to say, yo, that's a great song. Let's put that out. Because over last year, man, we put out, we put out broke, you know, like that's pretty much it. Mm. Like, and so, um. I mean, that's like over a whole year of being with them. We were like, I, everything was so precious and so like, so, so, so well thought out and precious that like, th it, it, when we were able to tour, I could like try this song on somebody. Hey, we just wrote this last night or we wrote this, you know, a couple months ago and let's try this. And if it worked well in Detroit or it worked well in, in Phoenix or something, then it was like, okay, so this is, you know, there's some good feedback happening here. Yeah. And I know that was a good song. Yep. Now it's just like me and the guys that made it. Right. And then the label that's like. You can't work it out on the road. Yeah. You can't, yeah. you can't, you can't get the, the opinions uh, or the feedback of, you know, the, the feedback from the people that you're giving it to. Yeah. So yep. then how do you, how do you know? And I mean, that's why this year, you know, like as, as I've been kind of talking to label the last couple of weeks, they're just like, look, dude, this year, let's just put out shit. A lot of it. Let's just keep putting it out. Whether we got to do every six, eight, whatever, let's just keep putting shit out. Cause we got to figure out what works. Yeah. We don't know anymore. Right. And everything can't just continue to be that precious. Cause we're just losing time, man. Totally. We're just missing out on so much opportunity to get feedback from people because we can't be on the road doing it. And we can't create those big moments that we need to release shit. You know, um, like, we thought Brooke was going to do this and do all of this, but like without being able to make those big moments and those, those going to the radio stations all over while we're on tour and yep. playing that and pumping it up and making it all huge. It's like, we, we, we don't get that opportunity to do it. So what was the point of just doing one song last what's, year? Right? What's interesting. And I'm, I want to, I want to chat with you about this because, uh, I've had a few of these moments, the, the videos that you've, that put you on the map, like, probably cost you a hundred bucks and then now you're you're doing stuff that's like you're spending they're beautiful your broke music video is so tight but there's like it costs money and and uh one probably has way more views than the other the one that like was cheaper i would imagine like you just singing into a microphone has i don't i guess i don't know the view count specifically but um I think that's so awesome that people, I, this happens with like the NPR tiny desk shit. Like, uh, we'll, I'll go around and you, you just like fight for late night spots or like, man, I want to play SNL or I want to do uh, Fallon. And, like there's all these kind of uh, like badges of honor in the industry of things that you want to achieve and do so that you can, it just feels good, right? You feel like kind of somebody tapped on your shoulder. But the, the tiny desk thing is so sick because you, there's like, there's no lights. There's no glitz and glamour. There's no, but it doesn't cost them a lot to shoot those videos. And it's just the music. And that's like what people seemingly on the internet are really gravitating to are these like stripped down, yeah, like authentic. Hear it. They want to just hear the music, which is so, so cool that your, that your label's like, we just got to release shit because you and your buddies just like, you're making gold, right? Just like, all right, well, let's try this one. Let's try this one. We're just Teddy yeah, singing to a mic. Know, it took us all year to get to that point where it's like, all right, look, we've just been writing and writing and writing and sitting on all this shit so precious about it and the label so precious about it. And they're like, we got like one shot to like really get this right. And it's like, that's not true. You mm. know, and we're all learning that that's yeah. just, it's, it's a different climate it's a different time now. And, and, and we are in the spot where, you know, we're, we're good live and, you know, 
Um, and, and, and the thing that I'm learning the more and more sessions with people I have and the more people I'm, I'm around and musicians and producers I'm around, it's, it's, it's so funny, but it's not, it's not the standard to be able to sing, to be a singer, which is so strange to me. Yeah. You no. know, like everybody, most, most people are not singing, you know, most people can't get up there and do it live. They can't, they can't not have a pre recorded, you know, tuned up spec you know they they can't they can't just get up there and do it and wasn't that you know, shocking to you when you like so when it went around the industry you. i was so shocked at how many when i was on capital i was so blown away by how many producers were like so how much do you want auto-tune i'm like what auto like i'm who uses auto-tune and i couldn't start hearing auto-tune until i was working with major producers who kind of just throw it on everything and and you know like throw it on thick you know like yeah. they're like legitimately changing notes that you're missing uh that that kind of always blew me away that yeah there's it's not the gold standard of people being able to get up on stage and rock like you can it's it's even it's even weirder you know that that to some degree there's a there's a certain a bit of auto tune you know if you crank the retune speed all the way that's when you get that like sound to it like what but that yeah you, know, you know when it does that little sound right <laughs> but like you know i i have noticed that like even the slightest little bit even turns your 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 production quality better so that mm. and that what gives a lot of people that just have a laptop and a mic like this the opportunity to like have a professional sound and recording and yeah slapping totally. a little bit on there and then now in their bedroom they can they can do something that feels like it can compete but then for 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 singers sometimes it just ruins you know the the record itself because yeah. if you got a real singer you throw too much of this or too much of that on it it's like it just takes away from what totally completely yeah. is or what it's trying to do but it's not standard there's so many times i've gone into places where they're just like i don't know how to to make this sound good because if i slap this on it what i would slap to make it sound good and authentic it's just going to make you sound weird or like or it, you know, so like, and I'm sure you're in the same, like, I'm sure you feel the same way in the same boat like that, that it just, it kind of, there's a crutch to it in, in our, our society now of like way that produce certain things that are just, it's hard for people to, to understand what a, what a vocal is. Yeah. It, it's crazy to me to know that we're like in a world where like singers aren't singers you know? yeah but uh, to harken back to that earlier point with the tiny desk there's no auto tune on any of yeah, those performances those are amazing and those are some of the the sickest performances on the internet when one of my when when my art favorite artists go to tiny desk i'll i'll go and listen to it when they go play snl i'm like i'm not unless it's somebody i know personally but when they go do the tiny desk thing, I'm like, okay, let me hear that because this is going to be them. This is like what I want to hear. This is as if they're in the room with me. And those moments are so precious. And I think I truly feel like the music fan. I had a, some, I forget which meeting I had, but she said this, uh, this executive said this thing that meant so much to me. She's like, yeah, you know, uh, you seem to have the lean in listener. And the lean in listener, what she meant is like people who care and pay attention. Yeah. And uh, there's seemingly a side of the music in di digestion where it's kind of passive, right? And it's, you're not paying attention to it much or it's in the coffee shop or it's playing in the background or, um, you know, you're at the, it's a club banger. So it's more about the beat than it is the vocal. But uh, there's a group of music um lovers who lean in who listen to the whole record the who, active listener right yeah, yeah the active listener and, and and i thought that was so cool i i, I uh I know how many lean in listeners are Teddy Swims fans, man. Because whenever I hear you sing, I'm like, I'm lean in a little Same bit. Same here. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I also do believe that there are, there are those songs, man, and there are those artists that I have, you know, as the more the, the more time has gone on and the more I started exper experimenting with, with hip hop and R&B and stuff, that, that I found those ways to manipulate auto tune that, like, really, really fit as an instrument in ah, so yeah, many sure. things you know sure like, totally because i was um man i was with this kid uh, a few days ago his name's kivo mooney and his uh song um leave some days kind of blowing up right now right and uh 
I mean, we were in there tracking him, and this kid just knows exactly how to manipulate this autotune mm. in a way that is just so different and unique to me that I'd like, when he'd cake it up, it was like, wow, he knew exactly like how to manipulate his voice and come at that autotune in a way that like I could not, like you hear somebody like Future, you know, that, that uses that so thick or like Lil Wayne or something that mm. like really manipulates that in such a way that like if I tried to get up there and do that, because I could sit there and point fingers like, ah, he can't sing, like, man, that's all bullshit right there. But in reality, like he's got that so to a science that like I cannot get that if I tried. He's yeah. got that manipulated and figured out in his setting so weird particular i mean it's amazing what's his name again keep Ke- 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 kivo money kivo money i'm excited to check i don't him even out. realize that that's a that's happening yeah man as it's just crazy as, it's, as a, a it's amazing how much like that i mean because even the song we started off with Do you believe? that was like one of the first songs that utilized auto tune wow, really? in yep. a way and totally and i hate that like song 87 now 87 or something it was like <laughs> wow yeah. But it's it's crazy knowing how how much it's progressed and how much cranking that tune and 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 knowing how that retune speed can can make your voice wiggle in a certain way and how to use that you know to to like create a no yeah. a, a, yeah. a a melody or to just like come in and you know what let let that let it suggest melodies for you uh-huh. like if I'm talking like this and we're in the key of a major you know and i put that on and crank the retune speed and then it'll just as i'm speaking it'll start to create notes for me and make a melody itself and then you just utilize your voice to follow those notes that it starts creating for you and next thing you know like future's got a whole melody as not a singer but like something that we couldn't get behind the auto-tune heavy mic and ever do ourselves and so yeah there's there's a instrument in that that I think is I'm I'm really starting to understand the more I dive into that kind of stuff and and really like love that kind of music that I I just forever as like a is a snooty singer that I was yeah, growing yeah. up to be like I was so like anti yeah, yeah I was I've I've I've, I've fallen right. under that um, that place before too just like kind of turning my nose up at people who use auto tune and I completely agree it's like. One, it's it's not for everybody, for sure. Like every listener is not going to enjoy that sound. But God, man, there's times when it's used so perfectly yeah, that it, it's it, that it you you if it wasn't on there, you'd be like, that's not that's not the track. That's not the song that I want to hear. Interesting. Um, yeah, and so there's been some tracks that I've I've written with that, and it's been exactly like you know what it what it needed to be with that the 808 and the hi hat and the and the and the vocal doing you know I can't I still can't figure out how I I just don't know how I could crank it up to the cuz there's there's just no way that I could emulate but I do understand like certain artists like Black you know that from Atlanta that could that could use it lightly but use it in his art or Chris Brown man one of the most amazing singers and he cranks it on thick for his yeah, music as he well does. but yeah. he uses it as a way to just you know come in and 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 I mean, it's almost like you can hear even in his songs, man, the more I, I start like writing songs in that way too, you can hear the way that that man punches in. Like when we was working with Kivo Money, man, I, um, I, like I've gotten to this point where I've started like trying to write verses like um, with that particular stuff writing songs where it's it's no thinking involved like i've been in some sessions uh my buddy uh arsenio archer um he's a producer i went to high school with and he's done you know um all of, like a lot of summer walker stuff and uh you know worked worked on a bunch of big stuff but uh this man i i had uh i had spent time with him in a studio session it was like maybe five or six years ago and uh I was in a studio session. It was a hip hop session in Atlanta, which is, you know, all of, I mean, so many sessions in Atlanta are just super hip hop oriented. Yeah. And uh, I'd go into that session and all of a sudden there'd be like 15 people in there. They'd be bitches, bottles. I mean, you know, I, I don't, I don't say bitches and derogatory. That's just the way, you know, right. bitches and bottles and weed and lean and everybody's just partying in there. There's a stripper pole on that. You know, they're getting down in there and this man will go in there uh, and, and just like, Man, it's crazy, dude. My my buddy, uh, he would go in there and he would start just like, uh, uh, man, it, it, like he he would go into the booth and he will literally just spit one line, and he'd be like, well, let me take that again, bro. Spit one other line. His his name is uh, his name is Money Moo and he's from Atlanta and uh, so he would go in there and while while he's spitting in one booth, uh, Archer's already made this 
song like he's made this beat in like five minutes gave it to money moo has my buddy ace recording him while he's in the booth now he's making another beat with mondo right here where you guys are sitting there's three guys on that couch right there they're writing verses while they're making another beat there's another man making a beat right here and this other guy's writing and then there's a party going on the whole time <laughs> and right and they're just sitting Jeez. there working and this man money moo sitting in the booth and he's like spits one line he's like all right that's cool give me the second line and he'll spit another line uh no i take that back get another line and he'll just make it up as he goes and as he goes and I, he came out and i asked him i was like bro how do you guys focus like this he's like what you talking about bro we don't and i was like what you mean he's like it's a vibe and i was like whoa whoa <laughs> it changed my fucking life because i was so used to like sitting down with a little acoustic and me and you sitting here thinking about like what are we writing about today? Yeah. What is the what is the huh. what is the thing we're writing about? Oh, that's a beautiful concept. <laughs> and then we'll play the same chord progression, and then we'll mumble melodies, and then eventually you'll be like, oh, that's the verse melody. Yeah. And then we'll start fitting words, and then you know, but like, you get into that place of I started like really when I started working with him, he's like, bro, just give me a line, just say something, whatever comes out, melody words, do the next one, do the next line, do the next line, and then. And in less than five minutes, you have, you have an entire verse and chorus of a wow, song man. or 20 minutes. And so I got to this point where I started doing this thing. Like every, every morning I'll get up and, uh, you know, we, we always make sure we meet at the studio at like 12. So I get there at 1130 and I give myself 30 minutes, like, like running cardio, right? And I get 30 minutes. I write a song. How much ever gets done, how much ever happens in that 30 minutes is what happens. That's it cool. just stretches that muscle for me for that little bit. Mm -hmm. And if it comes out cool, it's cool. If it's shit, it's shit. If it's great and we catch a vibe, then we just keep going with it. Mm. And I've written some of like my favorite shit that way by just not overthinking anything. Ah, and just, so cool. just spitting shit. Just going and just spitting whatever fell out of my mouth and if it fell out weird, then I deleted it and take the second line again and then cool. the third line. And it's super <clears throat> neat how shitty stuff comes out or good stuff comes out but you spent 30 minutes what's it to you yeah, yeah and it's also really uh <laughs> cool to to not be over um precise too yeah. like to uh to just let it flow out of you that flow state is um is super special when i <laughs> randomly you're talking about this experience you had in in atlanta uh and i remember at one point when I was like 16 years old, I had like a few songs up on MySpace and this producer, you might have heard of him or know him. He's from Atlanta. His name's Bangladesh. Do you know this guy? I don't know. He did that like Amelie, Amelie, oh, okay. Amelie, so he made that Amelie. Um, and a, a, quite a few other songs. Hit me up on MySpace. Hey man, you, I like your singing. You should come over to Atlanta. And I'm 16 years old. Like never swore in my life my you know folks are ministers i've like seen a boob once you know and and uh, th they fly me into atlanta and um and i am out of my element like <laughs> it's like like same thing they got a studio in their basement and uh they bring me in there it's the same thing starts happening like by the time by eight o'clock there's like 30 people in the studio they're rolling blunts and drinking i'm like this totally like sheltered young christian boy and i i remember just being like what the? i remember calling my folks being like this is crazy <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was fun it was like so much they were just having a blast which is i, I wish that it's interesting you're saying that because usually i will write just like you said you used to which is like okay we're gonna sit down well, and i play. still you know it but it depends on the, right you know that yeah. record you know and it really really depends on that record mm. and uh, uh, like you have to you have to really like know like the what that record wants or what that record is you know and, and, and that that space you're in and how to yeah. the maneuver that situation and that that record because you know if you're if you're in that room you know, just like what was with Kivo Mooney, like next thing, you know, he was there with his buddy. Next thing, his manager, his A&R shows up. Three more of his friends show up. One's so fucked up on lean, he's just 
<laughs> sitting there the whole time you know and you're like what's up bro what's your name <laughs> you know? and, but it also like by the end of the night we was all having a blast together and you know i, I was freaked out because i haven't had been around that many people in the studio i'm like wearing my mask like oh, oh my yeah. god brothers like y'all are just that cool with being like 20 y'all around like i'm i'm literally elbowing like hey good to meet you guys like because <laughs> yeah. it's like yo do we we don't have that many bits, especially not right now, you right. know, and yeah. they just, man, don't give a shit. They was just mm. in the vibe. Yeah. That's so cool, man. That's so wild that, that that happens. It seems like, though, Teddy, that you're approaching this whole entire career of yours with a lot of integrity, and you're just kind of, like, moving through it with this kind of eclectic vibe of your own. That you And, 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 and despite the fact that you might not know what your voice exactly is going to land on and where you're going to be and what the record's going to sound like and how you're going to be doing it, I don't know, man. There's something really beautiful about the fact that you're so... Ex like, you're so willing to explore yeah. all of that stuff with what you're hey, doing. Man, and I think we're, you're, we're students to it, Yeah, you know? man, your attitude just seems so... Um, uh, pure and I hope I, I really and I think it will because I like I don't I'm not in this world with you guys and and I, and I'm, I'm best friends with Alan and I've seen his his uh, spirit stay pure throughout this process and I've learned a lot of things from him just as I've kind of like you know followed behind in my own trajectory and um, I see that happening for you as well man I, th I think you have um, such pure energy and such cool intentions with what you're trying to do. And it seems like uh, no matter what your label tells you or what they're trying to craft you or trying to like, this is who Teddy Swims is. Uh, I hope you just like continue to stay exactly true to exactly who yeah, you I mean, are and, always going to be. And I'm, I'm, I'm super lucky too, because I, I you know, we, we, we did it the right way. And my, and my label is so, so wonderful about being, you know, cause everything to me is, is, is like, like meeting, you know, just like when meeting you guys, it's like you, you want something one way and you have, and you build it the way with the people around you that will keep your checks and balances and keep you. Yeah right where you're supposed to be yeah. and will never let you get to a point where you're questioning or doubting what you, your your path and what you know you want out of this. You know, if you do it the right way, like you guys have and are stuck together and stuck by each other, you can always just sit there and have each other's back. When, when Alan loses that focus or Alan loses that spark, you can be like, bro, this is not why we started this. This is not how mm -hmm. this is supposed to be. This is not what we, we thought about when we was in seventh grade. This is not what we this is not what we wanted, yeah. mm. you know, and, and, and you guys are bound to each other for that purpose. And I think it's, and, and, and as, as far as like my family, my team goes, that's what's so important because the last thing I ever want is, you know, especially coming up in the, in the metal world, I've seen so many people that, that were friends of mine that have, you know, that would just step and step and step on whatever, whoever they had to, to get footing. to where they yeah. mm. kind of had to, to get to where they were going. And then they get to a place where they're just so lost and get swallowed up and spit out by a label and swallowed up. And then now they don't even own their music or their name. And then they mm. spend all this time trying to buy it back and get it back, you know, and it, it just seems like you just lose your footing. Yeah. And you, you lose like everything or you end up like those, those, those stars, like, you know, the, the amazing Mac Miller, who is one of the most amazing people in the world, and then ends up you got the whole world at your beck and call, but you feel alone. You know, yeah, you feel you feel mm. like you're by yourself in it, and you mm. feel you're, you know, and that just. I, mean, I was watching this J. Cole interview one time, and he said, I told myself very early on that I need this level of success, but I will not give up this to get it. None of this is going to be given up. Mm. And meeting meeting you especially for the first time, man. It's like like when you meet your heroes and they're exactly what they're supposed to be. Like Thomas Rhett, man, when they're exactly who you're man, like I met I met Dominique Wilkins and, and, and Diamond Dallas Page the other day and they yeah! were just exactly like fucking exactly what they're you supposed to be. You met DDP? Bro. So uh we <laughs> played it we played uh, a couple weeks ago, uh me and Jesse, uh, my best buddy, my guitarist, uh we we played uh, at his house as as his birthday party, um, and he's still like the vice president of the Hawks too. And so uh, we played at his birthday party. Um, of course, it was you know COVID safe, and everybody kind of he had made sure everybody got tested and stuff. Yeah. But but you know when you're Dominique Wilkins, it's no problem to get everybody tested with you. All right. But but yeah, man, it was amazing just seeing him and like how much he invested. And he's like, Yo, man, are you a are you a wrestling fan at all? I'm like, Yeah, dude. Our next music video is like wrestling, like. He's like Diamond Dallas Page is coming. I was like, oh my! 
Dude, that was my hero. That's like my favorite. Was about, he in the know? video? But no, he wasn't in the video. Oh. But but what's crazy is I spent all night talking to him, and I've been chatting with him since. He called me um, a few days ago, right? Because I was talking to him, and I was just so blown away. I had never been like starstruck in my <laughs> life to meet somebody. You uh -huh. know, like to the point where I was like, oh my god, I just got to say something to you. I'm like, dude, Diamond Dallas Page. Holy shit. Holy shit. I was like, dude, my my brothers would be freaking out. My older brother Kalen would just. He's like, let's FaceTime him. And I was like, really? He's like, FaceTime Kalen right now. I want to see him. And I so I FaceTime Kalen. He's also <laughs> our roommate too. And he's like, holy shit, DDP. You know? <laughs> and he was just immediately, immediately like, let's FaceTime him. Let's call him. Yeah, you know, cool. and we chatted and we chatted all night, man. And I was like, bro, I hope to God that this isn't like, you know, and he's like, bro, your voice is amazing. And I will never charge you anything. I never want anything from you. I just want to see you succeed. All I care is I want people to help. I'm doing fine. I've lived. I didn't start wrestling until I was I didn't start wrestling until I was 35 wow. and man he's like you gotta watch my movie uh, Relentless you gotta see it man and that whole DDP yoga and how much it's changed yeah, affected man. people's life man people that were never supposed to walk again he has this one guy who not only walks but like runs miles now like mm. this guy is yeah he turned Jake the Snake's life around right, man. man and uh, so he called he called me a couple of days ago because he he had told me when I was telling him about the video. He said, like, "I'll make a cameo. I'll make a cameo." And then, uh, you know, some, we, we were going to film it Monday, and so I I called him Sunday, and he was like, "Hey, look, but I'm going out of town uh, Monday and Tuesday, so I won't be able to be there." But uh, we can get together Wednesday, and I was like, "Well, no, I gotta, I gotta leave to Washington, and so you know, and I gotta get tested and all that before I go out there. So I, I don't really want to expose you on Wednesday, you know. So I want to make sure like we're all good and everything's fine. And um, but I'll see you when I get back." And he's like, "Look, I've been thinking about what you said." He's like. Do you want to be just teddy bear forever? Do you want to be just big old teddy bear forever? Because it's cool. But I remember you saying something about you wanting to get in shape. And I was like, I mean, I mean, yeah, I definitely want to like would like to get in shape. He's like, I'll tell you what. Uh, you, your manager, Luke, y'all come out. We'll start getting together one or two times a week when you get back, and I'll get your ass in shape. But if we're going to do it, I need you to do exactly what I tell you to do when I tell you to do it. You hear me? And I'm like, yes, sir. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. DDP. What a you cool know? Thing, and, and he was just like, he was like, yo, I, I, I'll, I'll do it. But also, like, I don't, we're, we're going to track it. We're going to film everything. Like, we're going to track your progress. And then, you know, we'll get together a couple times a week. But I also, you know, I'll have Luke. So that way you guys can keep each other accountable. I'll set you up with all the DVDs and stuff. That way you guys can go home and do it yourselves and we'll get together but i'll be tracking and i'll be up your ass about it you better do what i say when i tell you to do it if you want this that work and i'm like yes oh my god oh, look at no, dude. What a cool yeah, dude. Thing, he man. literally but he, he <laughs> yeah he like offered to be like my personal trainer diamond <laughs> dallas face you know what i'm saying and it's like how often so i'm like I, I, this week i'm like oh my god man i'm i'm, I'm literally like I'm, I'm filming a music video for being in a wrestling ring for the first time and like a week before that I meet Diamond Dallas Page yeah. and then I'm coming out to spend time with my hero <laughs> Alan Stone. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, dude, all signs. I, I like told Luke, I was like, all signs are pointing. Yes, I got to get into wrestling school. Like, yeah, absolutely. Dude, gotta, let's, we'll get you. We'll blow up. I have a, a Little Tykes blow up castle for Rudy. We can throw that in, throw a couple DDP diamonds oh, yeah. in that, baby. Let's do it. Let's get our sweat on. <laughs> but it was the most what amazing. Cool. But yeah. he's he's like so an incredible person man it he just, seems like he's got like he pisses lightning or something his energy does. is really gonna exciting and his teeth life, are man. just like <clears throat> his teeth as white as that light man he, he's just perfect <laughs> bro. Well, get he's a perfect man dude <laughs> There's not a single wrinkle on his tight body, dude. He's like, looks like he's 25 years old, man. So hold on. I just wanted to play this one more time. I want to see DDP, dude. <laughs> um, God. That's Let's so check cool, out man. DDP. Gotta, Let's uh, get some you gotta, uh, more recent video. Document that whole entire thing. Oh, yeah. It's, that's man. what he told me. He's like, look, we'll track your... I have to show you guys the pictures, too, man. He, we took a bunch of pictures together, man. He's just absolutely just... Wow, man. Bro, he's straight gorgeous. shredded. Bro, and, uh, Wait, what? No, this isn't... Man, there's one thing. Yeah, he's, he's definitely... In, in, his, uh, in, his, in his documentary, Relentless, too, he's talking about... Uh, he's talking about, man, that is the... Uh, that is the fountain of youth right there. The the way that you stay young is by flexibility. And that's what, you know, yoga and his his style of yoga, which is also like physical workouts and calisthenics too. But Dude, I mean, he's look, shredded still. How old is Diamond Dallas Page? I don't know. Google it, man. 
Check me wow. out. Dude. Fifty something. I mean, he got started wrestling thirty five. That Diamond was like Dallas ninety Page eight is. or something. Wow, man. 64, and he looks like that, bro. 64, man. 64, and that man that's, looks that's like a, that, dog. It, there's a reason I think these people are gravitating towards you, Teddy. It's uh, it's it's no uh, coincidence, man. Yeah, you're, man. You're, you're, you're putting out that energy, man, and people are picking up on it, and so are we. And, you know, it's like it's, it's a beautiful thing, and definitely I think there's something to be super grateful for for whatever you need to do to kind of keep that gratitude in your heart. But, like ride that wave man Skip. embrace this shit and like we're doing a movie yeah, out man. here man and it's gonna be such a we're blast, gonna have a blast this we're gonna week, party man. man we're gonna just like enjoy each other's company give each other so many fucking hugs and just wake up in the morning and smile at each other man and be like dude look what we get to and do and the first of many man the first of many yes yeah, sure. so, so many back man. up man because we gotta do this back in atlanta too man yeah i'll get ready we'll put yeah. y'all up we'll do the same thing again the dude, other way around can't wait, we would man. love yeah. to, we would love to be can't those wait. friends that keep you grounded as well yeah man. you man, know we're... center each other because we do it for each other as the three of us but I, yeah i believe it's a this, god man. thing man we we there's just a reason we stayed in touch just you know it's just it's crazy to see like i said that one piece of advice you gave I mean, that one night that we spent together and how how much it's affected and changed my life and, and whether you remember it saying or having that conversation or really I knew, knew how much that affected me when I was at that spot in my life and then we're sitting right here talking about all this now it just I, I can never ever say it enough Man. how much like that night with you guys really um, changed everything for me and how full circle it's just like there's, there's just something, you know, man. Like, I mean, my 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 granddad was a Pentecostal pastor, so I, I grew up in the same. Like, uh. I totally understand. But there's, there's just, there's like, no matter how far I stray or get away from that, I, there's just always like something that that like must have its hand on us like there's just something that's there's like a, there's a lot of there's just a lot of interesting things around us constantly for they're not to be a wonder yeah and uh and i completely believe that uh, you and i met for a reason and uh managed to stay in touch for a reason and i think that that reason is just the sheer joy that you have brought me in the five six hours that you've been here coming all the way yeah, to man. spokane and hanging with us Same. um but i also believe that uh like there's so much power in relationship and in friendship and specifically in the entertainment industry and in any industry, like you, you're as good as the people you surround yourself with and you're as, you're as good as the, the human beings that you love and care about. And every time I meet like a proper soldier of the light, like yourself, Ted, I'm always just like, fuck yeah, dude. Re like, I, reaffirmation. I'm, yes, totally. You know? Like, I'm just reaffirmed that the world is good and it's spinning in the right direction and, and everything is good. So, dude, thank you so much for being yeah. here. Thank you for being on the show. Um, we're doing a live at the Lodge together. Yeah. Um, the house band is getting your tunes pristine. I can't wait to do some singing with you. That's going to be super fun. We're doing a Valentine's Day special together. Yeah, Teddy Swings um, is playing the reformed pastor, eight yeah. years spent in prison, <laughs> coming out, sober kick. Here, man, you are a crazy character in this thing. Yeah, I only spent six days in jail, honestly, but well, eight years you know, yeah. different now. Different. <laughs> What was the six days for? Can uh, you tell? So, can you tell the folk? Uh, when I was uh, when I was a senior, right before I was a senior in high school, I got busted. Uh, I was I thought I was cool. So I was selling weed and shit, and I got pulled over and busted for it. And uh, so I missed the first week of my senior year. Uh, <laughs> Feet in fucking jail. So <laughs> I had to spend the rest of the year like all my teachers knowing like, oh damn, that's the fucking weed selling jail kid you know yeah but, oh that's well now hey, so hard me. but i mean you know thank thank god for uh for musical theater man that changed my whole my whole life you know got me into music made me like uh have something other than you know selling and doing all the bullshit that i was doing at the time so well you better harness yeah, uh, music's, those experiences. music's great man so yeah. great so good three cheers for music hip hip hooray, hooray. <laughs> uh yeah harness that harness those experiences man because you're gonna bring bring them into that character and do that on this movie coming yeah out. damn right yeah dude teddy swims we love you man i love you man thank you so much for oh, being yeah. here thanks for being on the show um 
where can che- where can folk check you out online uh, obviously at- i'm teddy swims on everything man uh youtube uh you know facebook or twitter or instagram it's got a 404 at the end of it because there's an inactive account called teddy swim so those little turds yeah man. those little turds but <laughs> <laughs> one day i'll be famous enough to get just teddy swims hopefully yeah. but uh uh teddy swims just you know whatever look it up man or or watch the uh watch the special i'll be on the valentine's day you can look up uh the yeah. alan stone valentine special and you can find your pal luther luther yeah. braxton, <laughs> luther <baby>. braxton. <laughs> and uh we'll, we'll have all the links to to teddy's to teddy's work and stuff in the uh, description below this yeah. this viewing um dude thank you we're gonna do some writing together man yeah i can't it. wait <laughs> all right thanks folks Let it. thank you Oh, boo-boo, did you just make it to the end of the video? Yes, you did. Do you want to see more videos just like this one, huh? Do you? Well, then head over to patreon.com slash live at the lodge where you can support the how goods of this podcast as well as the entire Live at the Lodge family. Yep, yeah, you're going to get exclusive merch, personalized shout-out videos. Me and Jules, we're going to show up at your house and baptize your nephew, huh? Check it out, patreon.com slash live at the lodge.